All right, folks, the last piece to make to the fringe, we can integration test as little as possible. We can focus strictly on the data, database access. We don't have to waste any time on our functions. They're completely dependable. We've got wonderful amounts of coverage around them. All those pieces fit together and they're very strong. So this guy is the last piece to do that. Let's go ahead and extract him up here. We're gonna make a get data function that works just like the REST API, but it's a function. It's not a no op, it's a function. The only thing we're gonna change is two things. A, return a promise, because we want a function to return something to know if it works or not. And B, we're gonna use the tried and true return promise true. Since we don't know what to return, we're just gonna say hey, it worked or got some kind of error, right? We're not really concerned because at this point, the request and response, Restify is taking it over. The response is verifying that this function can be unit tested. That's strictly the only reason for this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Pow, we're almost done. Does that look nice and small? You know that everything else is unit tested. The only thing that's not is the actual sending of this data through a REST API and getting the data back. That feels really, really good. Should make you feel very proud of yourself by making it this far. However, <laughs> it's not all is, is well in the land of Hanalee. There's kind of a bug here. If you remember, this is an internal variable that references the global one. It's not here. Restify treats functions very specially, and this is not unique to Restify. Angular one does it with function names. Many other libraries do it by counting the number of arguments because they don't have method overloading like other languages. We can't necessarily put a default here. Let me show you what happens if you try. So we get npm run start or npm start, either one. And we go to our ping and run it. Our ping works. But if we do our data with Manhattan, DB collection is not a function. And that's because Restify treats this as a next. Restify has this thing with middlewares, AKA the functions that are called when your routes run. You can actually call a bunch of them in turn. Your third parameter is an optional function called next. And what you can do is have a bunch of middlewares. So for example, if I wanna inspect every single request for authentication purposes or a cookie or a special token, I can do that. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, I can return an error and not actually go to the next set of the chain of middlewares. It drives me crazy trying to test that. It's really hard to unit test. It's a lot easier to just integration test and call it a day. But I don't like to use it. And the downside to that is that we have this kind of third parameter that's reserved. Okay, so it's optional, but it's reserved, whatever. What if we do a third parameter for get data and we say, okay, that's next. And then we do data. So we rerun our server. Now we get another error. The DB is not defined. And that's because Restify doesn't know what it is. So it's kind of like attempting dependency injection, but it's not working. <laughs> we have another option that we can try here. Instead, we can keep our DB equals DB. So that we can say that our original pure function is legit, but the actual integration with it is garbage. So what we'll do is do request, response. We'll ignore the third parameter. We'll call our get data. We'll pass it the request and response, and we'll mainly pass it the DB, which we know is reference to the global variable. This is not really gonna be unit test. Oh well, 99% of the other code is. We'll run a integration test on this guy because that's all we really care about. How hard is it to really screw up one function when him and all his thousands of friends are unit tested to almost 90% coverage? We'll retry it one more time. Reload, and we're good to go, we got our data. We've managed to sequester off our actual Restify API calls to insanely small pieces of mutable state, this one variable, and we've unit tested the heck out of everything else, really good mocks and fixtures. Only fringe of the code base is the exact same spot that we're gonna do integration testing. Let's do our final unit test to make sure that we're ready to go to the next phase here. We'll export it out, describe, get data. It should work. So we need to create something called a stub, and that is something that we can throw in there and query how it was used. Mostly fixtures are just raw data that's a constant. You assert that they either were returned by a server, or returned by a function, or manipulated in some way. A mock, you emulate some more complicated class or fixture or function and say, this is good enough to get the unit test passed. But a stub allows us to identify how it works. So we're gonna create one manually. In the future, I'll show you how Sanan makes this a lot easier. So we'll say called equals false. We're not really interested in responsive there. We're more interested, did it actually call the plumbing of Restify? If you remember, we have a good request up here. A fixture we created for our zip is the same request we can use down here. For now, I'm just gonna copy pasta. Call this mock good request. It has our zip. We're gonna create a mock good response. So this is a Restify response and it's a mock that's good enough to make the test pass. So all we need is a send function. We don't even care what parameters it gets. 
but we do care that if it's called, then we set this flag up here to true. So that way we know, yes, if this were a real RESTify situation, calling this would actually get it called. So let's go ahead and put our mock good request in there and our mock good response. So we're emulating RESTify as much as possible in our good old mock DB collection. That works like Mongo. And when we're all done, it should say called should be true. You know that when we put these things in here in this massive, massive set of plumbing and pipes and functions that this guy is eventually set to true. It's actually, this function's called NPM test. And it works, fantastic. So let's make sure it fails now. This is a very important function. So let's make sure it says should fail. To make it fail, we're gonna have the same called, but we don't actually need a request. We're just gonna omit it. Our bad response can actually be the exact same function signature. Again, it's gonna send a response back to the client. It's just gonna be a bad response. We don't care what that is. We care that it was in fact actually called. Completely omit. So imagine if the client sent nothing to the server. We wanna make sure that this fails. So it still calls a response. It just calls it with bad data that, hey, it didn't work. And if you really, really care, you could log that out if you wish. Bad data. And so you can see the bad data was there was no valid zip, which is exactly what we're expecting. But that's not what this test is testing. It's verifying that we actually went through the plumbing of RESTify. If we plug this into RESTify like we did, right here, we are good to go. Which, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We are. We are done with the unit test. So let's celebrate by seeing our progress. And then we can go get crunk. Rerun coverage, 89, almost close to 90. That's epic territory, ladies and gentlemen. Scroll down. Look at all that white. Oh, look. The actual RESTify call is exactly what we're going to integration test. Congratulations, you've made it this far. Next up, we'll do integration testing. No more unit testing. Yay.